falling man. A tune faintly whistled rends the bruised air. It will have been spring and one would taste the lavender. Were we to take a walk along the shore after the settlement of the ledger, we would have seen the river run black over stone. We would have caught the tell of the moment the roses turned from pink to yellow, from yellow to brown, speaking with much meaning but little significance, hoping to lose you in a garden of aphorisms, hoping to find you somewhere still on the vine. Qui bibit dormit, qui dormit non pecat, qui non pecat sanctus est, ergo qui bibit sanctus est. You ask me if it's from the Lord's Prayer. Through an affectionate laughter lens of rage and irony, I say it could be and feel rather clever. This all blue vertigo choking on the maybes where yes would have been given, the question mark of the answer where the question is nothing new. When I open my mouth to ask, I often bite it shut. For I am full of courage and faith and hope. For now, I became more than a sentimental machine, even as I can't escape the incense you breathe. Would that it were so literal? All I can do is try to reshape sound into words, imitate a tune in thought, cast color into thought, thought as a range of numbers, thought as a function of feeling, thought as a coiled spring, a clenched fist. You've always had beautiful hands, but so have I. I wake two hours early that I may watch you sleep. I don't want to think. Watching a songbird that wouldn't fly as the keeper or as cage fellow in freedom. It is uncommon to so resent what is willingly given. Though each likes to think of locks and keys. Fair is the gravity of seeking a center towards or away from. The problem with teasing at both is that it is so easy to lose pieces. All the things that can never be said and all the things one needs to hear. Half the conversation is missing, but this can be connected in the disjoint. Trying to translate the passion into air when any language is a thing only spoken and not understood. An atrocity in the making of the everyday, the everyday an atrocity in the reduction. There was the conscious innocence of gentleness in how this preservation was observed the observation of this entropy, the observation of this stasis. It's a tension between the subject and the self, the subject and the discourse, the subject and the soul I wrapped up neatly with the strings that remain of this. It would make sense were I the scourge oft feared in tales. Be that as it may, sparkle silver, palms up, and if you count to 30 and open your eyes, I'll still be right here. You're laughing. Your control is complete, soft, too soft for me to realize when a movement is an action, with hands that detach gesture from matter, with hands that break things to make them new again. Follow the twisted line of my back to my head, Follow the straight path to my solitude. There, take solace. Perhaps when you cannot sleep and I struggle to stay awake while you do not sleep, dreaming of life. Qui dormit non peccat, I whisper. And never did one feel as foolish as I. Who sleeps does not sin. Think of me as a pulse. Think of me, life giver. Think of me, life seeker. Think of me in succumbing to hope. It's hard to love the sun with all your heart when it belongs to one who despises it. It's hard to view the bottom of the hourglass alone. The slipping is dull, inexorable, holding the sand in desperate hands determined, 
willing my fingers to merge and deform in a permanent distortion to keep it all. Because when you wrench and sleep, you never remember falling in dreams. Though in reality, you're implicated with madness, with treason. And who sleeps does not sin, and who does not sin is hallowed. Therefore, do not awaken to view the dawn of logic. I had thought you far away, drowning, floating, afraid to. I was too taken by the mirage to see your stark outline right before me, lying, still, forever about to rise and bolt, and you were laughing. So you think you can tell resolve from foolishness. It matters not who speaks. Rage and dream unto others as you would have them mark unto you. You're laughing now. You won't talk about it. I won't think about it. But were I to spin it into gold and lay it at your feet, would you accept? Would I see it done? Would you? You're not smiling beneath the mire. Not anymore. And you no longer laugh now that the joke is not yours alone. And I must ask, and I do. There is humor in the bleak moments. As a reminder to not be dull, as a concourse of yearning, as benediction in a faint tune. Work hard, love truly, be honest, and all will be well, my child. You've only spent a second of your life. Thank you.